I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet with eyelash yarn without crying or swearing or wanting to throw away your crochet hooks forever and ever and ever. And I am not exaggerating. This is eyelash yarn. Um, this is Lion Brand Fun Fur. <laughs> fun is really not a great thing to call it. The effect is fun. The process is a nightmare. I have crocheted with this stuff before. Um, you can see this is the little core of it and all of this stuff makes a really fun fur. And when my daughter was little, this was many years ago, I made a dress for her and I had a little fun fur um, uh, border around the bottom of it. I thought it was going to be completely adorable. I did what everybody said. I just doubled up that eyelash yarn with the regular yarn that I had made the rest of the dress out of, and it was so awful. It was so awful. You can't see your stitches. You can't count your stitches. You can't see where you've crocheted already. It's just, I was only doing a couple rows around the base of a toddler dress. It was very little crocheting, and I hated every minute of it. I hated it so much that I actually threw away my crochet hooks. for a good, I, I didn't throw them away, but I put them away for almost a year. I just didn't even pick up a hook. But fast forward to today, I really wanted to crochet a hedgehog. And I've had this hedgehog in my head for three and a half years now. I even wrote, I wrote a post about decluttering my craft room where I talked about someday maybe making a little amigurumi hedgehog with eyelash yarn to make the prickles. But I didn't want to do it because the stuff is so hard to work with. So three and a half years later, I decided I'm going to make the hedgehog and I'm not going to do eyelash yarn the way everybody else says to do it. I decided I was going to figure out a way to make eyelash yarn painless. And I did a lot of experimenting and I figured out a way to make eyelash yarn painless. So the trick is that I didn't try and crochet the body using the eyelash yarn because then you can't count your stitches. You can't like the thought of doing like increases and decreases like no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. So what I did was I crocheted the hedgehog body naked and then I surface crocheted the eyelash yarn onto it and it is completely painless. I couldn't believe how easy it was, and I love the fun effect. It is exactly the way I wanted this guy to look. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and now you can go back and do any pattern that you want. If you want to add fur to it, you can do it in a completely painless way. So you could make um, a lion, and instead of crocheting the mane, you could use some of this fur and surface crochet it around his face to make a soft furry mane. Or you could make you could make a furry caterpillar, which would be really, really cute for springtime. You could make a furry teddy bear. You can take any pattern and make it fuzzy. Just crochet the pattern first and then surface crochet the eyelash yarn onto it the way I'm going to show you in this video. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this. Have fun! Okay, so here's how we do it. I'm going to show you using some plain yarn first and then I'll go back and show you how to do it using the fuzzy yarn. So what I've done here is I crocheted just a little sphere. I went through the back loop only so we would have these nice ridges to stitch into on the front of it and I found I did a little experimentation and I found it was just easier to do if I stuffed the shape first. So I recommend making whatever it is you're going to make Go ahead and stuff it, finish it up, and then do the surface crochet stitching on it. So I'm going to show you first with some regular yarn um, so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So the first thing we're going to do is just attach the yarn. You don't have to do any knot or anything like that. But basically, I just did a little single crochet to get it attached on there. You could tie a, down, tie a knot on there, but it's just not necessary. And I'll go in and I'll weave that tail in later. So now, what you're going to do is basically single crochet through these loops on the front of your piece. So, just put your needle under your loop, just like a regular single crochet. Wrap the yarn, 
pull it through. You'll have two loops on your hook and then wrap it and pull it through. That's it. So it's just like a regular single crochet, except instead of going through the edge of the piece, you're going through these ridges on the surface. So I'm going to show you that one more time. Through, wrap it and pull through. You've got two loops on, wrap it and pull through. I'm do one more just so that you can, or a couple more just so that you can see what the finished Lo stitching looks like because this is actually a really cool effect that you could use on a lot of things. So what this does is it gives you a raised ridge of single crochet. So you could single crochet into this. This is one way that you attach clothing, for example, to amigurumi if you're going to crochet them right on. This is a way you can get that edge attached. So you've got nice easy stitches to work with um, after you do the stitching and you've also got this really cool raised ridge which could be a nice effect even just on scarves and things like that. So that's how you do it with plain thread, plain yarn, like smooth yarn, so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to show you a couple of tricks with the eyelash yarn. So I'm just going to take this off. So this is the eyelash yarn and you're actually crocheting. Just ignore all of the long little bits, the furry bits. All you want to pay attention to is that little core there in the middle, and it is really hard to see. It's so small that you'd think you would want to use a smaller hook with it, but don't. Use the same size hook that you used for your body. Um, a smaller hook is just more likely to drop uh, the hook out of the loop, and it is really, really, really hard to find again if you do that. So go ahead and use a big size hook, or the same size that you used for the body, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the solid thread to get that attached. So I'm going to just basically just start single crocheting it and I'll weave that end in later. So I grab the yarn, pull it through my top loop and pull it through. So it's not quite a single crochet because I didn't start with one a loop on the hook, but it's the same movements. Now I'm just going to do a regular single crochet. So under the loop, grab it, pull it through wrap it and pull it through both loops. And I'm going to do that again. And you can see, unlike if I had crocheted the whole body with this stuff where and then it's impossible to see the stitches, now it's really clear to see which stitch comes next. It's this one here that doesn't have any of the fuzzy stuff in it. Go under, pull it through, and I've got two, you can barely see it because you've got a whole mess of other stuff on there too, but you've got two loops on the hook. Wrap it and pull it through. I'm going to do just a couple more so you can see it. Under the loop, wrap it, pull through, wrap it, pull through. And you want to just ignore all that fuzz. Under the loop, wrap it, pull through, wrap it, pull through. Just do a couple more because I want to show you what the finished, I'm not going to finish this entire sphere, but I will show you what a good bit looks like. And I'd go pretty slowly on this because I don't want to accidentally drop the yarn because then again, I'm going to pull, I'm going to take this out. Let's, this is enough. I'm going to take this out and it is really hard to see where that loop is there. If you have, if you hold something light behind it, if it's a dark yarn like this, sometimes that'll help. And you can see I've got a little loop there but I actually had pulled that loop a little bigger before I pulled it out. If I just pulled it out by accident and had like a normal size loop on there, it would be just about impossible to see with all the fuzz. So go slow, take your time, and um, keep the yarn on the hook. And you can see now that it gave really good coverage of this little bit that it's gone over. And when I go over and do this next row next to it, the coverage is going to be really nice and dense. And you can see here, this is my finished little hedgehog, and you can see that you really would be hard pressed to see the, the body underneath him because you really get, just going on every row, single crochet on the surface gives you really nice coverage with this long a yarn. You may need to experiment if you're using a shorter yarn or something, you may need to do a double row of stitches or something like this. But with that, that fun fur yarn from Lion Brand, a single row, or, I mean a row, row of 
continuous rows of single crochet works just fine. The other nice thing about this is if you skip, skip a stitch or double up on a stitch or something like that, it doesn't matter. You're never ever going to see it. And um, it's because it's just on the surface of it, it doesn't interfere in any way with the structure and shape of your body. See, isn't that so much easier? So that's it. See how easy that was? If you've ever crocheted with eyelash yarn before and you wanted the effect but hated the process, all of you have your eyes lighting up right now because you're thinking about all the cool things you can make with this. So remember, crochet naked first and then add the eyelash yarn onto the surface. Have fun!